Hi, it's Anne from The Useless Crafter, and I know a lot of you guys got your Cricut machine for the first time this Christmas holiday season. And so I wanted to give you a general what to do in the first five days of having your Cricut. So anyway, before we get started, if you haven't already subscribed, please do. I appreciate all the support that I can get. All right, so this is for those that, um, you know, new and old, uh, just, Everyone works their machine differently, things that they like, and so I always like to see what other crafters are using as well. So I hope you enjoy this. All right, so you have your machine. Uh, one of the things, I'm not gonna go over everything, but here are the things that I wish I knew. So one is how to change the blade. So here is your pencil, your pen, or I don't know, it's for all your other, like not your non-cutting tools, I would say. You, you can put pens in here. Uh, what else would you put? Like your um, embossing tool, uh, your foil would go in here. And then here is where your blade goes. So one of the things that I love are my Amazon the off-brand blades. So what happens is um, you can check out the prices on my profile link for Amazon. Um, I love the blades. I You can't beat the price. It comes, I mean, so that way when you don't have a good cut, you just switch out your blade and you're good to go. And I'm going to show you some things that I have cut and how well it cuts. And if you follow my Instagram, you can see it too, where I really try to push the envelope with what we can cut, how thin it is, and knowing that your Cricut can do it. So um, I'm a big believer in the blades. Let me show you how to change it. So all you do is you pop this out. And I have four Cricut machines. This little piece right here, it depends on the machine. <laughs> Some, you just pop it open. This one, it's like, it's a little bit more of a struggle. So it's gonna pop out. Here is your blade. What you wanna do is you wanna push down on this little button right here and the blade will pop out a little bit. It's not gonna come out out. You're gonna grab it and pull it out and I know, I don't, I'm not worried about the blade because of the way I'm holding it. So it comes out, I have no blade in there, okay? So I'm actually gonna switch out this one right now. And I don't have any in this pocket, so give me one second. So when I buy from Amazon, it comes in a packet like this. I forget how many comes, uh, how many comes in a pack, but it's the price is so good that as soon as I don't like my cut, I'm switching it out and it's totally worth it. So what I do is I keep it in here. So this little thing pops open. You can put your tools. This is magnetic. So it will, you know, hold your blade and whatever else you want. Um, because I have so many machines, this one I don't use as much. The other one has all my tools in here. Okay. So it comes like this. I do like the blue blades. Um, and so all you do is, let me see, let me zoom in a little bit. Okay. The blade is on this side. This is the little protective sheet. So I'm going to pull it open, push on this, drop it in, and there you go. I mean, the thing is, depending on what you cut, um, what people like to do is they have a little aluminum ball and you poke it through. This is good for when you cut, like for instance, vinyl, right? You're gonna get like a little residue, like a little sticky residue. You might not notice it for the first, I don't know, five, 10 cuts, but then all of a sudden your blade's not as good. So you wanna just clean it. Um, if you cut glitter cardstock, for instance, you may get a lot of glitter residue. So what I do is usually after every cut, I will just pop this open, I'll push this up, and I'll blow on it because I'm more of a paper cutter. I do cut vinyl and uh, both adhesive vinyl and heat transfer vinyl, HTV. Um, so I will use the foil to poke out and clean it a little bit. The foil will not sharpen your blade, okay? I know that's, that's a myth. So anyway, that's what you do. Pop it back in and you're good to go. Okay. So that's pretty much the machine here. You feed it in. What's important about feeding it in is I'm gonna take a, let's say you have your, you know, your stuff on here, cardstock, vinyl, whatever it is. You want to always, you wanna push it up against, you know, as far in as it will go. And as you're holding it, you're gonna hit the, the arrow to feed the machine, okay? 
The reason why you want to do that is because sometimes you think it's all the way in here, but it's not, and um, it's not even. It, it can ruin your mat because it'll go in. It needs to go in straight. If it goes in like at an angle, you're gonna, it's gonna warp your mat. So you don't want that. The other thing you may have noticed is I always use a 12 by 24 mat. And it's not because I cut with 12 by 24 material. Sometimes I do. I do have 12 by 24 um, cardstock. I don't cut that often with that. Um, but also sometimes like when I'm doing a big project like the Santa sacks and I'm personalizing everything, I will want to use a full 12 by 24 um, space of heat transfer vinyl, for instance, because that you get on a roll. But even if you cut with just 12 by 12 things, you just put down two 12 by 12 sheets of cardstock. In this case, this is gold. This is mylar. It's so beautiful. So you see, even though it's not a 12 by 24 sheet, it's the best buy. It's also the most efficient for you to go and cut. Um, and if you're just always a 12 by 12 person, you use this mat. When this gets less sticky, you turn it around and you feed it in from this way. The Cricut will take both sides of the mat. They're equal. So you it doesn't matter which way you feed it in. So this is worth, and it's, like I said, it's the best buy on Cricut when it's on sale. I buy it in bulk. That's what I would do. Here's the other thing. So this is Mylar, and I'm going to peel this off just so that you can get a feel for when you have a good blade. Now, unfortunately, when your blade is not good, this can be a nightmare. <laughs> And sometimes you're gonna wanna just toss your mat. I've definitely done that where I'm like, oh my God, that was not a good cut. Why didn't I switch my blade? So you wanna do that. Now, the way to take things off your mat, that's gonna be controversial as well. <laughs> Some people like to flip it over. I do not, because I wanna see where the intricate details are. And um, there's a way to pull it off. This is obviously not cardstock. But if you don't pull cardstock off properly, your cardstock is gonna bend. So what you wanna do is pretend this is cardstock, okay? What you want is you do want a spatula. I always pop up a little bit so that it comes up a little bit. And then I just use this. This is what I do with my cardstock as well. So I have the same, you know, I I'm kind of um, I don't know, like a person of habit, right? Um, if it's a best practice, I always do it. So as you're pulling it up, what you don't want to do is you don't want to pull it this way, when it, especially when it's cardstock. That's when it's going to bend. If this is cardstock and I'm pulling it this way, so the force is going to be this way. I'm pulling it up, but I'm also pulling it this way. Your cardstock is going to come out flat. A lot of crafters, what they like to do is, I'll show you in a second. They like to bend this over and peel the mat back. What I don't like about that is, one, I can't see my intricate details. And that works for some things, but when something's really intricate, you don't wanna just blindly pull back your mat. Like you don't know where it's gonna rip. Um, the other reason why I don't like that is, you know, my craft room is just my craft room. I have pets, but they're not allowed down here. Um, but it's still, you know, you have like, I've got glitter, I've got little little things on my desk, and I don't want my mat to get dirty. So I don't wanna clean it because of that. I'd rather clean it because I cut too much than clean it because it touched my mat or my desktop. And then as you get more comfortable, like I sometimes don't need my spatula, but it depends on how intricate your cut is. But see, you can pull something off and it doesn't have to bend and fold. Okay, so I've got that out of the way. The next thing I want to show you, oh my gosh, I forgot to put this one away, so, or you can throw it away. I don't know why I keep all my old blades. I feel like one day I'm going to sharpen them somehow. I'm, <laughs> I'm not sure. That one day will come. Um, okay, what I wanted to show you next is the next tool that you'll really want to have. Um, I feel like that's all you need to know about your, about your Cricut machine itself. Um, you could put things up here, like if I am using my phone that day to cut, I rarely do, I'm a desktop person. You can put it on here like this, this will hold that. All right, I am gonna move, oh no, I'm not gonna move it. Oh yeah, I'm gonna move it because I'm gonna show you something else. Okay, 
I want to show you what a mat looks like. I know this is the same one that we were just um, messing with. When you have this and you don't want to hand pick it, you, you will need one of these. The little scraper. You can go like this and see how it comes off. Then you don't have to pick off each one of these things. Okay. The next thing that you really, that I recommend you have, let me move all this off, is a brayer. You don't realize how good the brayer is? This is what a brayer is. And basically it pushes down and makes everything sticky and flat and ready for your cutting mat to go into your Cricut. I'm gonna lay down some vinyl so that you can see what it looks like, what the difference is. I honestly was not a believer at first because I'm like, I'm gonna push down with my hands and I'm gonna push down hard and it's it's gonna be just fine. But it's not the same. Okay, so this is a beautiful holographic vinyl. It's from Cricut and I'm gonna push it down. So you want to, the, oh, the other thing is the Cricut will not cut at the top of this line and it will not cut on the edges. So it's a quarter of an inch each way. So technically, even though you can cut 12 by 12 cardstock, vinyl, whatever, you can even do 12 by 24. But the true measurement is actually 11 and a half by 11 and a half. So just keep that in mind. I mean, it's not a big deal, but just know that. So sometimes what I'll do is um, I will put it down at the quarter inch and go past, knowing that I can cut past the 12 inch line. That's just when you need to know something specific, like for a really big cut or very close to, you know, the line. Okay, so I'm gonna put this down. And this looks good, right? Oh, look how reflective that is, such a beautiful, but do you hear that? And then do you, can you see that bubble? These little air bubbles, it's really hard to get out. But you hear that? That means that it's being pushed down. You want you want your mat or your yeah, your cutting material to be flat on there and to be sticking because when your blade goes in, if there are any air bubbles, you're not going to get a really clean cut. So it's surprising how much this brayer makes a difference. Like now you don't hear anything more, right? All right, and then to pop this off, I always like to, you know, just bend it a little bit. And then even with vinyl, I like to do this, where I'm pulling this back this way towards me. And that way, when you do that, I mean, this obviously it has been in a roll, so it's going to do this, but your cardstock's not gonna bend. Actually, if we really wanna test it out, give me a second. I'm gonna grab a piece of cardstock. So when you peel it off, let's peel it off the bad way, okay? So I'm gonna pull it like this. So when it's a cut, it will bend more. But what I like to do is pop it up like this, pull it back, and it will be straight, okay? All right, that's your first. Those are the tools that I definitely recommend. I also recommend tweezers. Tweezers for when you pick up small things to glue it. You want one of these little picker thingies so that um, this will also help too instead of the spatula when you're lifting things off the cutting mat. Sometimes it's so delicate you want to just pop it underneath and kind of guide it along to pop out those letters. Um, those and then this. This is from We Are Memory Keepers. It's the quick stick. This side is sort of like putty so you can pick up really small pieces like this and see it's on your thing, because <laughs> sometimes it's hard to pick up. Um, and then on this side, you can kind of move things around. It's like a hard little um, acrylic tip that you can kind of push uh, when you're gluing pieces. All right, 
this and I think those are the main tools your blades your Amazon blades I do love my barely art glue this is great for cardstock and this little guy, my glue holder, how stinking cute is that? From Whimsical Wishes. All the links will be in the description below. Day two, I'm gonna take you into design space. So just follow along. This is gonna be able to get you going on your first project. Cause I don't wanna bore you with like all the details cause that's not how I learn either. Like I wanna go, I wanna turn this thing on, I wanna make a project and I wanna learn as I do the projects. So this will give you, the first five days will give you a, a quick enough intro that you can get through it and also do your projects. <laughs> all right, happy crafting, happy new year. And if you wanna take classes with me, I do have in February, 2023, I have XOXO Craft Girls. I have an in-person and also Zoom online classes. I'm gonna be doing a cake topper, 3D letters, and an off the mat. With those three projects, with any of those three projects, um, it will, just, it's like jumping into the pool. <laughs> You're just going to do it and it's gonna get you going on the projects. So you can check out the links below. Um, that's the only wor workshop that I have scheduled for next year so far. And it will take all ranges from beginning to an advanced person. If you're more advanced, it's more about learning your crafting style. Um, if you're more of a newbie, then you're just gonna get it all. It's just gonna be fun. So, and I'm co-hosting it with Josie from Sophie's Corner Crafts. So it's, it's gonna be a good time. <laughs> all right, Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays, Happy New Year, and Happy Crafting. See you later.